last time we saw our heroes, they were strategizing and planning for their newest adventure, Relic Recovery. However, celebrating in glee came to a halt as they had to hunker down and survive the treacherous Hurricane Irma. Having withstood the peril, our heroes are back and joined by adventurers from far away lands. Will they build a roller intake, or mighty claw, mechanic wheels, or six wheel drive? What secret have our heroes found to share with you today? Will the time get the best of them? As our heroes are now in a race against the clock, stay tuned for this next segment of Robot in One Weekend. That's where the notch went. There are two on here. Oh, there's two? Yeah. <laughs> you just end up putting two on there? Cut that audio off of that. Two on there, I promise. Pretty much gonna be wrong. It's gonna be on YouTube. <laughs> Okay, so we're here with a horizontal roller prototype. Um, this is actually the second iteration sitting with me here, but our first one had just the straight horizontal bar. And there's a lot of friction between the glyph and the, and the playing field surface, the mats. And what was happening is it, it would pull them in, but it would like tumble through. It wasn't just like a smooth linear movement that we want. So we <laughs> number the second iteration, and um, what we added is a bottom roller that's spinning at a high rate of speed. The theory behind it is, is it'll kick the front end of the glyph up before it goes in and then suck it through. Um, it's a little wild, it works okay, it's still kind of tumbling. Um, we think that maybe adding some Lexan shields to, to control where the glyph's going once it gets inside of the mechanism might work. Um, but we've got some other prototypes that are working really well, so I think we're going to get together and evaluate all of them and decide which one we're going to pursue uh, moving forward for the final robot. So one of the things you can do with the Rev Expansion Hub is uh, use this new piece of software that we're about to launch called the Rev Hub Interface. It allows you to directly plug into your hub from your computer. So when you're prototyping something like this, where you're not sure of the speed the motor you want to do, you can actually live drive the, the motor itself. So in this case, we want to test those green top wheels. We can just slide it and change the speed control very simply, or even the direction. And then from that, you can actually even get the values that you would plug right into your Java code to do that. So you can do a lot more live iterative, proto iterative prototyping uh, right from your computer without having to set up your whole control system. And it's safer because you get the fuse and the, all the real things that you need. Yeah, so you're still behind a 20 amp fuse. You still have all the same conditions. You're gonna be current limited the same way you would be on your real robot, which is something that you don't get when you touch a battery right to the motor. All right, so, hi, I'm Robin. I worked on one of our manipulators. Part of what inspired this is trying to figure out how we can grab both the blocks as well as our little guys at the same time, as well as how to maximize the points for each of those. So you want to make sure, you know, you can lift this up to any height, and you want to make sure you can set this vertical off the field. So this should accomplish both of those. Uh, so what we got here is, it's like a, a clamp, a grabber, with two free spinning wheels that act as like bearings. So when you grab onto something like the block, it's going to auto align straight up and down if you grab the middle. Similarly with your hanging guy, straight up and down. So wherever you set it, it's gonna automatically be at the right orientation. So how this works right now is you intentionally, for the guy, you have him knocked over on the front and you have your grabber towards the bottom of the robot. You would grab on to towards the middle of a block. You just pick up. It auto orients. If you have an arm that goes behind you, it'll just follow with, stay at the right orientation the entire time. If you have your guy, similar. This one doesn't grab as well, but it should work. Straight up, straight over. All right, so we pulled our El Toro mechanism off of our last year's robot, and I was hoping it was gonna be as simple as taking it off, using the rev rail to slide it closer together uh, to be able to get to the shapes of the blocks. Uh, didn't quite be, seem to be that easy, so I just went ahead and grabbed two of the smaller uh, rev motors. What is the name of these motors? Core Hex. Core Hex motors. Uh, put two of them on there, so that way we have two hex shafts sliding in opposite directions. Uh, the idea is that this will be on some sort of elevator that you can move up and down and then grab onto the cube. There you go. There you go. All right, this would be really easy to stick on to a rev elevator. you just be able to stick it on there and then you'd be able to go up as high as you want and then come down on each block and stick it on one after another. Right, so a mechanism like this, the hex shaft would be too long, we would need to cut it because if you tried to come over and score it like this, you're going to come up and hit 
uh, and not be able to score it. So you about two, three inches maybe to be able to get in there and then drop them into place. Hey guys, I'm Nick. I'm here with Jason, and we built a fairly simple uh, roller claw using some uh, Rev Core hex motors, some green Anymark compliant wheels, uh, some Rev Extrusion, and some Anymark S32. Um, we built this prototype just to be fairly simple to check some of the geometry of a roller claw picking up a glyph and sort of kind of play with some things and see if the glyph like spun or did some random stuff inside. Um, it, it sort of works. Um, if you get the glyph perfectly aligned with the rollers, it works pretty well, but it doesn't really deal with um, you know, a glyph at 45 degrees because it's some small fixed rollers um, or a glyph standing at a near impossible angle or something. Um, but when you get it aligned, it, it works really well. It grabs a good, good hold of it, um, but we need to do some refinement to deal with, okay, sure, it holds a, it holds a glyph, but you can't really get a robot to pick it up. It's kind of a mechanism in a box that really only works by itself. Uh, we got, so we got the rollers in place. It pulls in the glyphs really, really nicely. Um, and it works great, but we thought it would be a problem, and it is a problem in that the arm has to swing through the wheels to try to lift uh, the glyphs up. This bar wouldn't be there. This is just a mock-up piece, but there's so much friction between these wheels and the, and the uh, glyph that we can't really lift it through it. It just kind of knocks the, the um, glyph out of the gripper. So it's really thrown us for a loop because we're trying to figure out the answer. Uh, we sat for a couple hours just throwing lots of different ideas and there's a thousand ways to skin a cat really in this situation. Um, I, we're going to sleep on it. We have a lot of ideas. Um, there's some that are leading others. Um, but we don't really know which one we're gonna go with and we're all kind of tired, so we're not gonna make a decision now. Um, we've got um, some ideas for knocking over the jewels um, and retrieving the relic and uh, dropping that off. We haven't really fully fleshed those out um, yet, but we did, you know, our main goal was dealing with these glyphs. So that's where we're still focusing a lot of the energy, but we do have some of the members of the team working on the other stuff. So with that, we'll see you in the morning. Um, just a, another day left to go, and then we'll have an awesome robot for you. So we'll see you then. Hi, Riley. Yeah. <laughs>